Lewis has had to deal with a whole load of issues that we all know well about. Have you ever considered whether that might be an opportunity for you? Everybody's different. Um, you know, I'll have a different approach probably to Lewis. He had, has a different approach to another driver, and, and that's between all of the Formula One drivers. And um, you need to learn what is best for you and, uh, and respect how each individual does that. How big a difference would it make to you if a Formula One team called you tomorrow and said, yep, we'll give you the support you need? Yeah, definitely a lot bigger difference and uh, then you know you, you've, you've got a lot bigger chance of getting all the way. George, a day I'm sure you have long dreamt of. How does it feel to be, or to know that you're going to be a Formula One driver in 2019? We're all very excited to see this uh, new Mercedes AMG lineup, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. Welcome both, great to see you. And uh, how are you feeling, Lewis, about this new era of Formula One? What's in store for him? Uh, well, I th but the thing for me, you've just got to walk into that team and just be yourself. Oh. Don't try and be something you're not. This move has been put in place for Russell to one day be their lead driver, not just to be Lewis Hamilton's teammate for now. I don't think George Russell is going to Mercedes to be Lewis Hamilton's wingman. Yes, he will support him. Yes, he will play that team role, as any driver would do at any team. But he will be fighting for victories with Lewis Hamilton. Uh, to, to give us a, a Mercedes lineup like we had with Rosberg and Hamilton uh, back in you know, the years 2013 to, to 2016. George Russell. You are a Formula One race winner. Woo! Come on, team! And it's hard on! One, two, unbelievable! Time! These are just the beginning, guys. These are just the beginning. Woo! So proud of all of you. Alonso served his penalty at the stop. Uh, again, in for a lead. So riddle me this, George. How are you giving Lewis Hamilton stand-down orders whilst he's on a charge on fresher tyres? Sometimes you've got to look out for yourself and recognise you, you can't please everybody. You have to almost be selfish in in a regard. And this matters because George having the temerity to even utter these words just confirms what many have long suspected that George will never be a wingman to Lewis in the way that Bottas once was. Who is your favourite ever teammate? Valtteri. I mean, wingman isn't even a word in George's vocab because he could never be anybody's number two. Oh no, not George. He's a number one in training with a ruthlessness and an aggressive streak worthy of the moniker. Russell's unwilling to be a number two driver who's woven deep into his DNA. You can see it in his body language. You can hear it in the way he talks. But what grinds the gears of Sir Lewis Hamilton fans around the world is that in stark contrast to Lewis, who's expressed zero interest in politicking for the sake of trap position or a couple tents. The man from Kingsland Norfolk has positively ID'd this as a source of advantage, bending the team's agenda to his own will to suit his racing need. Lest we forget Sandvoort 22 where the team wanted George to stay out and fend off a charging Max Verstappen with a view to potentially unlock a Lewis Hamilton victory. But as George has done from time to time, he exercised the veto overruling his team and choosing instead to pit for a set of soft compound tyres. So you're following the safety car through the lane, you're not stopping. So stay in the fast Why lane. Not? Are you sure? You don't want to throw the soft on? You stay out. What? What happens if we put the soft on? So we are splitting, you stay out. Leaving Lewis once again vulnerable in the latter stages of a race to those around him on fresher, faster tyres. Abu Dhabi 21, anyone? Why did you stop George? We had a buffer between us, and now we don't have that. Oh, I can't believe you guys are just grooming, man. I, just, I can't tell you. I'm just saying. But it's important that we make a distinction here. That whilst it might look like George is deliberately sabotaging his teammate, indeed hanging Sir Lewis out to dry again, that's not what we're seeing here. This is just a byproduct, surely, of George making the right calls 
at the right time. In the latter stages of any race post the safety car restart, the soft compound tires are just too powerful. Why wouldn't you want to be on them? And in the court of public opinion, this would be far easier to digest if George just went full bad guy a la a Michael Schumacher. But PR63 is your typical baby face, often making all the right noises that you would expect from the perfect teammate. Working with a new team, with a new set of engineers, we just have to keep an open mind and uh, be dynamic to the situation. And as we said before, we know there will be drastic improvements. We hope improvements as the season progresses, and that's where we need to make sure we're on the right side of that. But does he back up perfect teammate noises with perfect teammate action? Well, that would depend when it serves a purpose. So what are we doing? Are we racing? Or securing the one two? So if George is in front, then his message to the team is let's hold station, let's manage risk. If George is behind, however, you might hear something very different. And for many, herein lies the problem. In the way that they go about their business, respectively, George is very much the prost to Lewis's Senna. A driver acutely aware of the role that politicking and craftiness can play in race wins and championships. And some will say this is George being manipulative. This is snake behavior. But I'm not sure I see it that way. This is being resourceful now, pragmatic even. But there's one thing that we can be sure of. Once the visor goes down on the helmet labeled 63, George isn't racing for the team, nor for his teammate. George is racing for himself. And I mean, how very dare he, an F1 driver doing his damnedest to get 25 points over a race weekend. Who does he think he is? But he need not worry because he's in good company. He's King George. Because by no means is he the first F1 driver to get bolshy with an engineer and push back on a team order. Yeah, but this surely speaks to a bigger issue at Mercedes. So let me ask you this question then. If past this prologue, can two alphas in a team ever truly coexist? You know, I'm not really sure, but there is plenty of evidence to indicate not. Some might say that selfishness is just in George's nature, that this is who he is. And I can see why people might have that viewpoint. But lest we forget, F1 is a place where the cost of entry is selfishness. F1 drivers become great, not despite their self-serving, but because of it. And in this sense, George Russell might well be in common amongst uncommon men. And for that, he shouldn't be chastised. He should be celebrated.